a hockey rink and sharpened skates. Shinny, four and four with sticks and borrowed goalie pads. It's never been just a game. Hockey is a landscape on which we project the myths that define us as a nation. Memories of Saturday nights in front of the TV with our dad. The sounds of hockey mums chanting in frozen arenas. And most of all, the timeless Canadian dream that says a boy from a small town in the middle of nowhere can become king of the world just because he can skate. Hello Canada and hockey fans of the United States and Newfoundland. And Foster Hewitt United every States. Saturday night, everybody listened to the, NA, the hockey games from Toronto and uh, that was kind of an inspiration, I think. for Gus Mortson lived this dream. 13 years in the NHL, four Stanley Cup rings, nine consecutive All-Star games, undisputed king of the penalty box. Not bad for a boy from Kirkland Lake. But back then, the choice was simple. Play hockey or work in the mines. During the 30s, uh, the mines uh, used to promote uh, hockey considerably uh, with a lot. And uh, we had players in Kirkland Lake like uh, Bill Dernan and Johnny Crawford and a, a couple of others that, that all turned pro. In fact, I think that when they were playing in Kirkland, they probably could have gone, entered into the NHL and, and uh, upheld their own. Uh, I think this was kind of a, an incentive for, for kids growing up in, in Kirkland. Getting signed to the Toronto Maple Leafs was the ultimate goal for a kid from small town Ontario. That was probably one of my greatest thrills was just making the, making the Leaf team, you know at training camp that year and I was I was playing with Pittsburgh which was another farm club of uh, Toronto. A half day came in the room in the Pittsburgh room and said Mortson he says grab your stuff he says you're coming back in the bus with us. The young Mortson set out to prove that a player from Kirkland Lake wasn't afraid of anybody even the great Gordy Howe. I hit Bill Quackenbush and and uh, I caught him around the knee I guess and uh, they had to help him off the ice and I had played against Gordy and when I was in Tulsa and he was playing in Omaha and we knew each other and he but he came over and he and he said Gus he said he says that wasn't a very nice thing to do what you did uh, there was so much adrenaline I can recall flowing that I didn't say anything I just stood up and I drove him as hard as I could <laughs> and he went down to the ice all right, but he was up in about two seconds flat, and, and we were both at it. I had a little advantage. I was on, the, I was on at least on boards uh, in the bench, and he was on the ice. But when that happened, the whole Detroit team came off the bench, and they came over out. And then when that happened, the Toronto team came out, so there was a whole fight. Everybody was fighting. Everybody had some fun. And there were all these, all I thought, there were all these people, all these fellows behind me that were in the Navy. Uh, they got into it also and there was even the fans from throwing chairs down and it was, it was quite a time <laughs> it started. <laughs> but after the game is over I find out later that they weren't personnel from the, from the Navy or anything like that. They were Detroit policemen. Mortson joined the Leafs in 1946, just in time to be part of a dynasty. Four Stanley Cup rings in five years. But as great as that team was, when the first All-Star game was played the following year, only two Leafs made the team, Turk Broda and Gus Mortson. I played in the first nine uh, All-Star games. Somebody told me that Gretzky had only played in eight, but I'm not sure he could have played in more than that. <laughs> the All-Star game showed off the best of the league, but it was actually set up by the players to raise money for their fledgling pension fund. NHL players lived with low pay and no security. I figured out that, that I had a career of 13 years in the NHL, and I think I've worked it out even at my best pay, and the best the most money I ever made in the NHL was uh, $12,000. And uh, most of the players in the NHL today make more money in two games than I made in my whole career. Stars like Mortson were used to endorse cereals and corn syrup, but unlike the superstar endorsements of today, they had nothing to show for their efforts. The deal that Con Smythe had made with Foster Hewitt was that Foster Hewitt had all the rights to all the players, all the advertising rights so uh, when beehive corn syrup I don't know what Foster got out of it but all I got was four quarts of beehive corn syrup 
That was to say that I ate behind corn syrup, I guess. The players knew they were getting ripped off. Ted Lindsay and Gus Mortson were both from Kirkland Lake, and they played a major role in starting a players' association. They had seen the bitter fight for union recognition in the mines of Kirkland Lake when they were growing up. But the league owners, they played a tougher game. Con Smythe, uh, when he heard about the association and who was on the association, he had said that uh, Mortson is never going to be a coach or, uh, or do anything in this NHL anyway. That's the way things go, I guess. Con Smythe was right. Gus Mortson left the NHL in 1960. He moved back to northern Ontario and raised a family. And despite his impressive record, he's had little to do with hockey ever since. As far as watching hockey, I, I did. I, I watched uh, some of my boys were still were playing juvenile, and uh, I, I went to watch them. But after they were out of hockey, and I, my grandchildren too, I watched them play hockey. But uh, ap- they, they are now at a point where uh, they're more interested in playing basketball, etc. So I, I really am not a, a, an avid fan. Quick shot taken there by Prosper to block and three leads come away at center. But even in an age of pink pucks and spoiled superstars, there are moments when the game still mesmerizes, when the game still makes us believe. Like during the playoffs, when the new Leafs Looks something like the Great Leafs of old. I still support the Toronto Maple Leafs, though. They just aren't consistent in the forward line. Sometimes they, sometimes they look good, and sometimes they look terrible. I guess that's the way we were too, though. Sometimes we look good, and sometimes <laughs> we were bad. Neal cleared off to the side. He passed right out to Barocco. He's on the left wing. He just scored. 